Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Timmy Litt, and tonight I'm going to cook a few dishes for you, hopefully successfully. Um, for our main courses, we are going to have a flank steak, which I'll explain a little bit more about later. We're going to have some large jumbo shrimp that I'm going to make a special marinade for. We'll have some grilled asparagus, some grilled potatoes, and some grilled, actually sautéed portobello mushrooms which I will saute with some garlic and some onions. And for dessert, we will have a creme brulee. As you will see, it isn't too terribly difficult. Uh, what I'm using are four eggs, uh, some heavy whipping cream, vanilla extract, maybe a couple of tablespoons, teaspoons full, and three teaspoons of sugar. I have some empty ramekins uh, in about a half inch of water uh, and an extra little bowl to help me get the egg yolks because you don't want the egg whites. So what you do, you can get some fancy tools from uh, like, uh, what's the chef place called? Pampered Chef. Uh, but I prefer just to use the egg itself. Bring it in half. Take the egg from half a shell to half a shell and let the white just kind of drip on out of there. Doesn't all have to be out, but just the majority of it. Okay, now we're going to scald the cream. I'm going to bring it to just below a boil. So I'll turn it on medium-high heat. It should only take about a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to mix the sugar with the egg and the vanilla. The vanilla is kind of by taste. My little son's walking around here, so he'll come into the picture every once in a while, and he'll probably want to help his daddy cook. Grab a whisk over here and whisk all these together. Now that the cream is scalded, I'm going to Add it to the mixture slowly and stir it in. Now, we'll end up sifting off the, the bubbles later, so don't worry about that. Okay, I'm going to pour it into the ramekins. A little bit spills, no biggie. Don't pour it all the way to the top, though. This will cook in a 350 degree oven for approximately 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to put those in. Start a timer and then prep some other stuff. Can't be. Now I'm going to make the marinade for the shrimp. Uh, a friend of the family's uh, who has a cooking school in France gave me the basics for this recipe. Uh, all it is is equal parts of mayo. Make sure you put in enough that will cover all of the shrimp that you have so it kind of depends on how, how much you're cooking. Uh, and then Parmesan cheese. i got a handy dandy little shredder here that's an essential in my kitchen. We go through a lot of Parmesan and Romano cheese. Want to come up, buddy? Want to come up? Okay, here's my son, Caden. He likes to help Daddy cook. This is panko. It's a Japanese breadcrumb. I picked this up at Meadow Farm Foods. I haven't found it anywhere else in town. Um, and it just adds a little bit of crispiness. So I put in some of those. Now, uh, when you're choosing your garlic, make sure that the garlic hasn't started to sprout like this one has. Um, if it has, the garlic will be very bitter. Okay, uh, we got the equal parts of Parmesan cheese and mayo and a little bit of panko, the Japanese breadcrumbs. Uh, those breadcrumbs, they work great for fish. Anything that I would normally put regular breadcrumbs in, I use panko now. A whole bunch of garlic. 
uh, some preferably fresh, but right now I don't have any fresh basil. So Caden's going to put in, oh, he's going to put some basil in his bowl. Dump it in here, buddy. Good job. See how it helps? Uh, some pepper. Some garlic salt. Now these are all just the flavor. I like quite a bit of garlic salt and both me and my wife like quite a bit of pepper and quite a bit of basil. Why don't we dump that in there? Uh, oh, okay. Here, I'm going to set you down for a sec, bud. There you go. And some freshly ground pepper. Quite a bit of freshly ground pepper. Mix these all together. Just enough for the six shrimp that I have over here, thawed, deveined, and no tails on them. I don't know why they keep the tails on the shrimps anyway. Make sure that all of the shrimp are covered good, and you're going to want to marinate this for at least an hour, hour and a half in the fridge. Next, we'll get the, wash my hands here. And we'll get the flank steak marinating. Okay. With the flank steak, I think I'm going to go with a red wine, uh, black pepper, garlic, and garlic salt. So, a little bit of red wine. Garlic salt. Now the flank steak comes from the lower part of the cow that gets a lot of exercise. And it's fibrous because of this. But cooked properly and sliced properly, um, it turns out pretty tender. You don't want to overcook this piece of meat, so if you like your uh, meat more than medium rare, I wouldn't buy it. However, uh, it is a good option because it's cheap. Uh, this is half of the piece that I got for $11 at Premier Meats. Once again, we like a lot of pepper. And I'm going to throw in a tiny bit of Dijon mustard. I like a little bit of Dijon in most of my marinades. You want that, buddy? There you go. A little pepper for you. There we go. Now, I am going to grab a fork, turn this once, and re-season. You don't want to keep a uh, cut of meat like this too terribly long in a marinade because it'll cook it. The salts and the acids from the wine will dry out the meat and cook it. A lot of people think that marinating makes the meat more tender. They're wrong. Put that right next to the shrimp in there. And we'll start prepping some vegetables. First, uh, the grilled potatoes. Wash them up. We want thick slices. Keep the skins on. I'd say about at least a half inch thick. Like that. With these, I'm going to use some olive oil, garlic salt, pepper, and saffron. There's a little uh, piece like that. Just chop off that part. Any bruises or darkenings of any kind. Okay. Now what do you want there, buddy? That pepper? All right. He looks like you're cooking good down there. So I am just going to get some olive oil, pour it over. Rub it in a bit. Once again, the garlic salt. 
Put garlic salt on just about everything that I cook. I use a mixture with a little bit of parsley. Can I see the pepper bud? Thanks. I'll give it right back. Okay, there you go. And now some saffron. Uh oh. There we go. Saffron is a very valuable spice. It's used a lot in rices and risottos. Um, and it has a very strong flavor, so a little bit goes a long ways. But it's worth more than gold in its weight, so use it sparingly. Okay, flip these. You don't want to start these marinating too far in advance or they'll turn brown. A little saffron. Mm -mm -mm. That's right, buddy. Okay, potatoes, done. Next, we've got some asparagus here. These are rather thin asparagus. If they were thicker, I would use a uh, carrot peeler and peel them. I usually cut off the lower two and a half inches or so, spread them out. We're not gonna need to grill these for very long. So, simple. Olive oil, garlic salt, Parmesan cheese, and a tiny bit of, oh, gotta go back here, balsamic vinegar. We've got about four or five different kinds of balsamic vinegar in our kitchen. Uh, some of the nicer stuff you use for like a salad dressing or something. Um, I always caramelize my onions with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. All right, those asparagus look perfect. They can just sit right there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now we will get uh, the ingredients ready for the portobello mushrooms. When cutting an onion that I'm going to caramelize, there's some tricks to cutting an onion that I use. I only need half of this, so. But if you take the onion and cut it horizontally first, maybe in three little strips, not going all the way through the onion, but just about to the end, and then cut it vertically like this and then if you finish off like this see how these small little diced pieces of onion are just shaving right off now as far as the eyes watering thing I heard that if you put olive oil on your knife that helps and also if you burn a candle I don't know why but that's just what I heard I just let my eyes water instead. So those onions, I'm going to caramelize with some butter. I put a little bit of olive oil in so the butter doesn't burn. And a little balsamic vinegar. And that helps bring out the sugars of the onion while it's caramelizing. And it infuses the flavor of the balsamic vinegar within the onions. So it's kind of a separate flavor than the mushrooms give. Uh, I'm going to chop up some garlic here that we will use. We won't put these in yet or else they will burn and get bitter. But when you're chopping the garlic, it's good to smush it first. I use the side of the knife, but you can use a mallet if you feel uncomfortable doing it with a knife. Um, but smush it real good to get all of the oils that are so tasty. Get them coming out of the 
garlic. You don't have to have a finely chopped garlic. I just do it pretty loosely. So I'll put those over here on the tray, ready to go in with these nice looking portobello mushrooms. I'm going to chop these up a little bit more. They tend to put out a little bit more juice and we can use this juice to make a quick little white wine mushroom sauce to put on the flank steak. Coarsely chopped. All right, I think that all of our inside work is done. We're just going to sit and sip on a glass of wine and wait for the creme brulee to get done and then I will see you outside. So, we're outside its grill. Uh, first thing to go on is the potatoes. They take the longest. You want the grill good and hot because you want to sear these potatoes so the moisture gets held in. I'm going to be basting them with some olive oil that I brought out here, the handy dandy basting brush. I also took and put the excess olive oil on some Venetian bread that I'm going to grill a little bit later. Might as well start these onions up. It takes quite a while. Hold on, we've got a child. Come here, bud. There we go. One up. It takes quite a while for the, the onions to caramelize. So, start that baby up. You want to start with a higher heat and then turn it down to a medium to medium low after a bit. All right, see you in a while. So I've been basting these potatoes and they're perfectly charred. They're still not cooked on the inside though. And I don't really want to char them anymore. So I've got this grill buddy is what they call these. Uh, you can use a piece of aluminum foil. It's got holes sticking through, so air gets let through. It's not going to really char them anymore. It's just going to let them sit up there and hang. I always have one of these on when I'm grilling. In the meantime, these onions are caramelized. Uh, they're not burnt. They just are a nice brown, caramely color. I will add the portobello mushrooms. I'm going to still hold off on the garlic, though. I want to get the butter on these. I'm going to hold off on seasoning them until a little bit later. I'm going to cook this bread and just wrap it in some uh, cloth for later. I can put it in the warming drawer if I need to heat it up a little bit just to get that done because you run out of space sometimes. I've got one of the cool down creme brulees out here and my handy dandy little torch that we got in a kit at Target. I think we paid 25 bucks for the ramekins and uh, the torch. What you do is you put some brown sugar on top of uh, the creme brulee and you want to caramelize that brown sugar. So we've got cold on the inside and you're making a hot caramelized sugar on the top. You don't want to burn it, you just want to sear it. Perfect. We've got the mushrooms. Time to flip the Vienna bread here. Nice and crisp. Perfectly done. I think it's uh, safe to add the garlic and I'll turn down the heat on this a little bit more. And then we'll add some uh, white wine to the mushrooms. We are almost ready for the main courses, so I'll see you in a bit. I think that the potatoes are almost done. That means it's time to cook the flank steak. Now one thing about flank steak, you want to cook it fast and then you want to let it set for about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to cook the flank steak right after that. I'm going to cook the shrimp while the flank steak is finishing itself off. I'm going to pull this baby off when it's rare and let it cook by itself for 10-15 minutes and it'll come out medium rare. Mmm, those mushrooms are smelling good.
Oh, I think it's probably ready for me to flip that flank stick. Oh, does that look good? Potatoes, almost done. Means it's time to put on the asparagus. We'll grab this handful of asparagus. Lay it right on the grill over here. I'm gonna have to bring it up to the grill buddy after a while, um, while the shrimp is cooking. But we want to get it good and seared. You see the flames coming up? That's A-OK. -okay. Put that baby down. I think the mushrooms are ready. They can just hold for a little bit. And we are good to go. You know, I've taken the flank steak off. It's rare by my touch. Uh, it'll sit there and cook itself for another 15 minutes. We need to get the shrimp on. I've moved the asparagus up to the grill, buddy. Take these here big shrimp. Make sure there's a bunch of goop all over them and put them on the grill. You want to cook these so they're a little bit crispy on the outside. Now they're a little bit thicker, so you might have to move them up too. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Wash my hands. Okay, looks like everything's done. I'm in need of cutting uh, the flank steak. When you're cutting it, you always want to cut against the grain. And that's true with any meat, actually. All right, I think we're ready to go here. When you're cutting the flank steak, you always want to cut against the grain. I've let this sit for about 15 minutes, and sure enough, medium rare. Nice long strips. Now, when you're doing the seafood and the steak, you don't need large portions of either. I'm cutting these in about half inch strips. What's the matter, buddy? You want up? Okay, this is the this is the important part. We're plating the plate here. So I'm gonna take and put three of those pieces of flank steak on a plate. Some mushrooms on them. Mmm, this mushroom's got a deep, very rich white wine sauce. I'm gonna grab a potato on each side. With a couple pieces of the al dente, you don't want to overcook these asparagus. You still want them crisp in your mouth. A piece of the bread. And three of the beautifully done shrimp. And that is good eating.